I'm starting today's episode by wishing everyone a very happy Independence Day. This channel now has completed one year and it's been an interesting journey over the past one year. Today's episode, I'm going to talk about the E20 ethanol mixing and the recent news which says that India has achieved 50% electricity production through non-fossil fuels. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Green and Clean YouTube channel. So in one year, uh, I have gained around 343 subscribers, around 20,000 views for 39 videos and about 13 or 14 shots. Now, these numbers are by no way uh, staggering for a YouTuber, but I I'm not overly worried about the number of subscribers, the number of views, etc, etc. All I am concentrating at the moment is producing good content in and around EV usage. I I'm also sharing all my real life experiences of owning an EV. So the intention is to spread the knowledge and hopefully uh, convince more people that EVs are a possible choice in today's world. Uh, speaking of success of this channel, uh, I don't really think it's doing a, a great job. I, I don't think I've convinced uh, a whole lot of people uh, on converting EVs. At, at least in my close circles, I have at least two dozen examples where somebody came close to buying a new car and uh, that new car was not an EV. Even though they have, they, they were living in uh, independent houses, very conducive environment for uh, EV uh, usage, but for somehow they didn't they didn't think that India is still ready for uh, EV. I beg to differ, but I respect uh, everybody's uh, opinion on this matter. But having said that, uh, if you have been watching the content of this channel and if you have not subscribed yet, now is the chance maybe to hit that subscribe button, press the bell icon, share the videos, like the videos and do what is possible from your side to promote such content. All right, let's get started with today's uh, first topic of today, the E20 ethanol mixing. Uh, now this is uh, this was coming. The ethanol mixing in petrol was always there uh, in the talk, but honestly speaking, I didn't like the way it is implemented by the government. You know, all of a sudden, uh, I'm hearing that a lot of petrol pumps are already giving uh, E20 ethanol mix, where the cars that are produced before 2023 uh, are not yet E20 compliant. I'm not a supporter of implementation of this idea, uh, I'm a supporter of the idea that more and more uh, commute which we do for every day should be pollution free, should be environmentally friendly as well as uh, uh, should be should be cheap to, to commute, right. But the way it is implemented is not correct because a lot of people still have uh, the old uh, ICE engine cars, they're not that old. You can't say like a six year or, or an eight year old ICE engine car as an old car, no way you're going to replace a, a car. Um, or totally get rid of a six or eight year old car, uh, whether it is ICE or EV, right? So I I'm not in support of the way this has been implemented, but it is implemented and uh, it is now gradually going to show an impact on uh, ICE engine cars. People are already uh, reporting less mileage, uh, some issues with the wear and tear and, and the, the engine um, issues. So in the long term, it is only going to probably get worse. I don't know, I'm not an expert, but based on what I'm hearing and what I'm reading out in the internet, it looks like the E20 fuel is beginning to show its effect on uh, ICE engine cars. Remember 20% of 20% uh, uh, of the liter that you're buying has uh, ethanol and uh, the price that you pay for the petrol is still the same. So you're paying the same price of petrol for apparently less mileage of the car. So if you remember, I've done uh, extensive episodes on running cost comparisons, uh, the emission uh, comparisons of ICE versus EV. And uh, in those ep uh, episodes, I have used some baseline figures uh, for, for uh, ICE car mileage, etc, etc. Now, all of a sudden, all those parameters are going to look even worse for the uh, ICE engine cars. And the comparison between ICE and EV is only going to go more and more in favor of uh, EV cars. So. E20 is here, probably you and I cannot do much about what is being done uh, already. So if you have a car which is not yet E20 compliant, then you are uh, at a risk of low mileage, maintenance issues, etc, etc. So that makes another reason why I always advocate for an option which takes the all the janjat of 
running a car and right now the only solution for that is uh, EV. People do talk about other options than EV but I don't think anything is as good as EV when it comes to uh, running of a car or a vehicle. Um, if you have an EV you are not worried about you are probably independent uh, because electricity can be produced from solar panels like how I and lot of other EV owners uh, are doing. So our commute is independent of government policies right now and that's really a great feeling that you are not worried uh, about any uh, changes that is happening in the geopolitics that could affect the oil prices or the affect the mixing of oil with ethanol uh, and whatnot. So you are geopolitically free while running an EV. I know while buying it maybe not because you still have to buy a whole lot of parts from China for EV in some cases like in my case the whole car is from China but once the car is here uh, you are then geopolitically independent. So on the occasion of this Independence Day if you want to be geopolitically independent EVs are the better choice today. So this E20 may become E30, E40 in the future and there is not going to be uh, a definite ending where, where, where this will uh, end right. So even if you buy a new car today which is E20 compliant, uh, ICE car I mean if you buy an ICE car which is E20 compliant today, there is no guarantee that 3 or 4 years down the line uh, government will come with E30 or E40 and then you are again non-compliant. Another thing about this E20 uh, mandate is that uh, I get to hear that in some petrol pumps you still have the E10 uh, mix of uh, petrols. So they are more expensive so your running cost is going to be more but what I want to bring to your notice here is uh, if you have a petrol car and it, if it is not E20 compliant then you are probably going to look in search of uh, petrol pumps that have uh, an E10 uh, petrol or something like that and the choices may be limited for you and then you will end up almost like an EV. In EV the charging infrastructure is not as great as uh, the petrol stations but when you are talking about being an E20, uh, be, being a car with the E10 compliant and you are looking for a E10 fuel, you are probably in the same situation as an EV guy looking for a public charging uh, station. So it is the, the, the advantage that you see for uh, petrol cars is you know on, on refueling aspect is going to be not so not so much of an advantage uh, anymore. So in effect this E20 news has put a lot of question mark on the future ownership of uh, ICE cars and that may be the reason why you should now consider switching to an EV. And to this, all this discussion add Trump's tariff. Why has he put 50% tariff on India? Because we are buying more oil from Russia and why are you buying more oil? Because transport sector needs more oil nearly 60% of all the oil that is imported is used for transport section. So by sticking to the old ice engine uh, way of uh, uh, transport, we are getting more and more oil from somewhere and that results in tariff and whatnot uh, in the geopolitics and it is not good that some politician decides how much you are going to pay to commute from place A to place B, right? Now let us go to the second part of this video. India producing more than 50% of electricity through non-fossil fuel means. So th there is a news article uh, as you can see here which says that India has already achieved 50%. When I checked last uh, it was still 20-25% so I believe this report is true, hopefully it is true but it is more likely that we will get more and more greener with the electricity uh, production. Now why is it important for an EV uh, ecosystem is uh, the pollution analysis caused by EV versus ICE cars. Again, I have covered an episode on the pollution analysis of EV versus ICE car and at that point, I was considering 20 to 25 percent uh, only for non-renewable uh, energy sources, right? So if I remember correctly, uh, the current, the, the figure that I used in that episode is something like uh, 711 grams of uh, CO2 emissions per one unit of electricity that is produced. But with this 50% news, the amount of CO2 emission for one unit of electricity is going to be even less and as per my calculation, it is around 511 grams per unit of electricity produced. So that means an EV car can gain the carbon 
neutrality with ice car within say 40,000 kilometers. It used to be 60,000 earlier in my previous video. Uh, I think around 60,000 kilometers an ice and EV car would have polluted the same amount uh, of uh, CO2. But with this 50 percent uh, uh, mix, we are now talking about much faster uh, carbon uh, footprint neutrality. So it is 40,000. That means if you run 20,000 kilometers a year, you will gain uh, in two years the carbon neutrality and uh, if you drive even more then even faster and bear in mind the electricity mix uh, the the green energy mix in the electricity is going to be more and more so if it becomes like 70 or 80 percent then it's even faster that the uh, ev cars will gain uh, on its co2 footprint now what i'm talking about is we all know that ev cars pollute more at the point of uh, production because batteries have to be mined, the materials have to be mined and these do cause pollution much more than the ice engine cars. But once you have the car, uh, when you start running it, that's when uh, EV cars make more sense. Already with the previous uh, electricity mix, uh, it used to take like 60,000 kilometers be before uh, all the uh, high CO2 emissions caused by EVs during manufacturing is offset, but now it is even more and more faster. So this news comes as another positive for EVs because one of the things that people still talk uh, about EVs is that, oh, it still causes pollution. You are just moving the pollution from tailpipe to, to somewhere else. And that argument that uh, EVs uh, still pollute is slowly and surely being put to rest. In the end, I'm saying only this, EVs are very, very practical. They make much more sense even in today's um, scenario. It may not be the most perfect, but trust me, it is getting better and better by the day. And sooner you jump into this bandwagon, more and more uh, you will gain independence on this Independence Day. Wishing you all a happy Independence Day. Again, see you in other episodes of Green and Green YouTube channel.